Hey everybody, this is day 28 of our Covered in Dust Lenten Devotion. And uh, we're tracking through uh, doing a daily devotion once a day, uh, reading scripture and then reflecting on that scripture. Uh, you may have picked up on this if you're also tuning into our worship services that uh, we have a worship service and then the texts that we have for several days are actually the same text from those worship services. And uh, our text today, Ephesians chapter 5, verses 8 through 14, uh, is the epistle lesson from this past Sunday. And uh, so we get to take two almost with that epistle lesson and maybe actually slow down enough to, to sink in, in, sink in uh, soak it in a little bit. So uh, we're going to start with the Bible. I'm going to use a, a, a printed Bible today, but if you want to follow along, you can use the QR code. And, um, and it'll take you to the YouVersion Bible app, straight to the Ephesians 5 text. And uh, so we'll get right to it. Um, Ephesians 5, verses 8 through 14. It says, for... Evelyn's trying to jump in on the, uh, the live stream today. So, for once you were full of darkness, but now you have light from the Lord. So live as people of light, for this is light, for this light within you produces only what is good and right and true. Carefully determine what pleases the Lord. Take no part in the worthless deeds of evil and darkness, instead expose them. It is shameful even to talk about the things that ungodly people do in secret. But... Their evil intentions will be exposed when the light shines on them, for the light makes everything visible. This is why it is said, Awake, O sleeper, rise up from the dead, and Christ will give you light. All right, so that's our text for the day, and uh, we'll take some time to hear some devotional thoughts on that. So uh, you've heard the phrase, let's shine some light on the situation. Frequently, this is an opportunity to reveal certain truths about a situation that may or may not be welcomed by those involved. So what determines the difference in response? If those involved are behaving in an upright manner, they love the light. For those who are not, they do not welcome the light. When Jesus healed the blind man from our text yesterday, um, the Pharisees were not thrilled with the impact Jesus was having. They didn't have eyes to appreciate the miracle or the person performing it. Instead, they lived in fear of losing their authority and power. That was made evident in their offended response when the formerly blind man suggested that Jesus was indeed a prophet. As Jesus continues to reveal who he is as the Christ, the Savior, or the light continues to reveal their evil ways. Paul is encouraging all Christians to live as people of the light. It will produce what is good and right and true. Hey, Sharon Rhoda, good to see you this morning. I'm glad you're, you're watching and tuning in. And um, so here's a few uh, questions to reflect on. Hey, Christy, good to see you too. Uh, question number one, have you been reluctant to allow Jesus to shine light on aspects of your life? I, uh, hey, good to see you too, Diane. I, um, I think this one actually more and more so I'm convinced that this one is uh, a huge reason that, that many people... Um, stall out in following Jesus fully because well we're we're afraid that it might actually have to open up uh, the in the most inward parts of our being our heart and reveal some truths that are hiding in there um, but it's powerful that in in the revealing of those truths Jesus also um, is able to to heal and to give us new life and so even though it's it's tough sometimes to acknowledge aspects that we like to try to keep hidden away, um, Jesus has a healing kind of light that I think could be powerful if we would trust him with it. So uh, question number two, how have others reacted to the light of Christ shining from you? And uh, this could probably go both ways, just as 
um, it does in our in our passage from yesterday. Sometimes shining light on uh, others is sharing the love and forgiveness and grace of Christ. Sometimes shining light is accountability and encouragement to do the right thing. And so I'd encourage you to think through that. When have you experienced uh, shining Christ's light, and um, and what uh, what was the reaction? So then, question number three is: What might it look like to live more like people of the light every day, um, with your family, with your coworkers and friends, um, and your social media behaviors <laughs> these days? I think we're all um, being held accountable to focus on how we actually behave in social media since it's the primary form many of us are communicating. So yeah, reflect more deeply on these three questions. Allow God to speak to you in them. And then ask the question, uh, what is God saying to me? And then what am I, what am I going to do about it now? Um, let's close uh, with a prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your Son, Jesus, to be the light of the world. Help me to follow Jesus living as a person of the light. In Jesus' name I pray it. Amen. Amen. Well, I pray that this um, devotion uh, is a blessing to you as you kickstart your day. Um, feel free to share it, tag it, um, uh, put people, uh, let people know about it so that this could be a way that they start their day. Uh, if they don't have the uh, devotion itself, the link to the PDF is is there so they can download it for free and join in on day 29 tomorrow when we tune back in again i'll try to be consistent about being really close to sorry evelyn's trying to get in the announcement i'll get try i'll try to get really close to uh, nine o'clock each day and and uh, see how that goes all right god's blessings to you and have a wonderful rest of the day